When it comes to asymmetries or the left AIC pattern or the right BC pattern or anything layered on top of those patterns, there's a few things that people tend to run into in terms of hurdles where they feel like they hit a roadblock and they can't seem to make any more progress. And this is what this video is gonna address. But today I wanna to talk about mostly the pelvis and the three main areas that tend to be restrictive and limit our ability to make progress. But for us to do this, it requires a mindset shift because a lot of people think that in order for me to improve how my body moves, in order for me to accomplish new positions, I need to activate muscles in order for me to change the shape of my pelvis or be able to access certain ranges of motion they didn't have. But here's the thing, it's not necessarily about activating certain muscles. Sometimes we need to downregulate the tone or activation of other muscles to be more successful in actually activating other ones. Let me show you what I mean by that. So on this left AIC pattern, we have a right hip biased towards internal rotation. The right femur tends to be more adducted because we're weight bearing on that side. So this right hip is higher. And so this femur goes in more. Now this is resulting over time in a tighter right AD ductor pulling this femur in. So if we're trying to push out of the right side with the right glute max to help close this space and create external rotation of both the pelvis and the femur, then that could be pretty problematic if this right AD ductor doesn't want to let go. So something we can think about doing is inhibiting the right adductor and then going about restoring more pelvic external rotation on the right side, which will help turn us left. Here's one way you can do that. So to set up for this, we've got a little bolster, a little block underneath Trevor's feet right here. It's about three to four inches tall, and you can go down to two if you really want to, but I would not go much higher than about four here for most people. We need to make sure that whatever you're using, whether it is some step like this or some books, that your whole foot can be flat on that object. So he's feeling his heel and also the ball of his big toe and his little toe where the ball of the foot is on both sides to start. Now, what I want you to do, Trevor, is put your hands across your low ribs, and just perform a nice soft exhale and then pull back with your left heel and that's going to give you your left hamstring. So he's trying to drag it back and that will help him perform a pelvic tilt. He can do it on the right side a little bit too, but this right side, once he feels the hamstrings, is going to just drop off down until it hits that foam roller or whatever object is resting. You could use pillows, you could use a couple of books stacked up, whatever is stable and is high enough to allow you to have that leg drop off to the side, but not stress yourself or roll excessively to the right side. So in this bottom position, he should feel a stretch right here on the innermost portion of his right inner thigh. And that stretch could run from here all the way up into that high groin there. It's gonna be mostly up in here. All the while, he's feeling his left hamstring work. So he's keeping his left foot flat, dragging back, but obviously his foot's not gonna move. He's just maintaining that pelvic tilt and that left hamstring should be working. He's just gonna hold this position for four to five soft, elongated breaths in through his nose, out through his mouth. The other problematic areas tend to occur on the left side because the left side is biased towards external rotation. And also this femur is biased towards external rotation, abduction. What tends to happen is that because this femur is slid forward within the hip socket, over time, the back of the hip socket tends to get a little bit restrictive and we can't get the femur to push back. And therefore also that's going to limit the ability for us to shift into that left side. So what we could do is open up the back hip socket right here, a posterior capsule stretch. And this is going to allow us to really push that femur back and turn into this left side. And this is one of my favorite drills for that. So we need a table or a box about waist height. We want a one to two inch book underneath our back foot. And we want our back toes in line with our front foot, mid foot. So what we wanna do here is we wanna get about, that's about, I would say 10-ish inches away from that box and then bend both knees and then get really heavy on the back heel there. We want to have about 90% of our weight on this back foot here, keeping the whole foot flat, but keeping most of your weight in this heel right here. Very nice. We should be able to feel the whole heel ground. A little bit of Trevor's shoe is off here, but he's still got his whole foot here secure. This is just the back part of his shoe, but his heel is grounded on that book. 
Now keep feeling your big toe, little toe, but again, most of the weight's back here. Push this right knee forward, but stay heavy on this back heel and push this left knee in. Good, that should allow him to recruit that left inner thigh muscle. And now round your back and put your forearms, palms up on that box right there. Very good, so he's really shifted to the left here. And what he should feel is as he keeps that right knee going forward, which is really just going to keep the knee in the same place because he's staying really heavy on this back left heel, this should give him a stretch, this weird sort of bony stretch sensation in his back left pocket. It should not be painful, should not be discomforting, but it should be a different sensation than a muscular stretch, so to speak. So what we're gonna feel here as we exhale is a little tiny bit of side bend to the left. So he's gonna feel his left abs upon the full exhale. Hold that tension as you inhale through your nose. He's gonna expand his right side here. And he's just gonna sit in this position, making sure he's still staying really heavy on his back left heel, making sure the right knee is trying to go slightly forward, but we're staying heavy back here. He's feeling that stretch in his back left hip. Left inner groin is a little bit on and so are the left abs a little bit with the exhale. The other most common area is a muscle group on the left side, and it tends to be our TFL, or tensor fascia lata. This muscle is really good at picking up leverage when a pelvis is forward on one or both sides. So when this pelvis goes forward, this TFL muscle has leverage to create compensatory internal rotation. Now remember, the left side is biased towards external rotation, so this muscle has a lot of leverage to take over as an internal rotator. The muscles that help us shift into our left side genuinely are our adductors on that side, our obliques on that side, some hamstrings on the inner side, and also our anterior glute med, which help shift us and work together to get us in this left side. However, if we have a TFL that is really overactive, then we're going to struggle to either find our adductor, but also, and more commonly, the anterior glute med, because these muscles are right next to each other. People tend to feel like they're feeling their glute med, but really it's just their TFL kicking on. And that's why some people don't see much success when they try to do exercises to shift them in their left side. Generally, we want to be in this position and we want our knees bent at 90 degrees as well. And what we're gonna do to start is just do a little tuck of the hips. So a little posterior pelvic tilt, and then we're going to lift the left knee up to the level of the left hip. And now what we're going to do is push the left hamstring literally into this object and push the right knee down into the floor. Maintaining that, he should feel the muscles in the back of his thigh engage, so the left hamstring should engage. Now what we're going to do is turn the toes down to the floor very slightly, and then as Trevor exhales through his mouth, he's going to lift up. As he inhales, he's going to drop that leg down, just the shin with this thigh staying in the same place right there. He's gonna stay within the limits of what he's capable of doing, and if he's doing it well, he should feel the muscle on the back side of his hip engage. So we have the TFL right here, which is that muscle which is kind of directly beneath this bone right here in your hip, it should be posterior to that right here instead of right here. If he's feeling that along with his left hamstring, then that's a great sign he's doing it right. For some people, they're gonna really struggle to feel that anterior glute med as opposed to the TFL on this activity, or they just won't feel anything. If that's the case, you can play around with being in less hip flexion or less hip bend. So you can take something like a mat, put it against that object. So now you need less hip bend. And now you can just go through the same exact thing. So lift that left knee up to the level of the hip and then go through it. After that, the exercises that help push us to the left and secure us in our left hip can be so much more effective because we have inhibited the muscles or downregulated the tone in those tighter muscles. And that can be a very effective and powerful tool for the right person who is struggling. So let me give you an example. If we had someone that really struggled to shift into their left side and improve their internal rotation and we try all these different drills and nothing seems to stick, what we could do is give them a posterior capsule stretch on the left first and perhaps also some of that TFL inhibition and then follow that up with the other drills we tried before 
and we can tend to see more success in those first drills. A really good indication this video is relevant for you is if you've been trying some of these activities and you're not seeing your assessment measurements improve. If you're curious what those are, I have a left AIC video I will link below in the description and that can be a really helpful resource for you and also that has some of those starting level drills.